You know, it was the late Fred Shiro who told his Flyers teams before their first cup that you know, we win today and we walk together forever. And it's true, we will be together forever. <laughs> June 7, 2004 will always be a special date for anyone who follows hockey in Tampa Bay. It's the night a dream became a reality. The night the Lightning were crowned kings of the hockey world in just their 12th season of existence. In some respects, it's as close to an overnight success as the game has seen. In other ways, it's a story that's taken a dozen years to write. Phil Esposito did such a great job in terms of uh, convincing a number of people to get the franchise here to start with. And I, I really believe that Phil had the, the organization on the right track. <laughs> Team did make the playoffs there and and it seemed to be trending in the right way the new building was built in downtown Tampa and things seemed to be looking up and and yet there was always a sense that capitalization of the club was was not where it needed to be and then the pressure was on Phil to start trading players and try to get payroll down and do all of those things and and some good young talent was allowed to leave town and then finally the team was sold <laughs> Art came in, and one of the first things he did was he fired Phil and Tony, uh, promoted Jacques Demers, who had been the head coach, made him the general manager as well. And, and what was amazing about that was that Art had closed on the transaction in June, and by December of that same year, he was looking to sell the team. So once again, we spin off to a, to a new owner, and that's when Mr. Davidson bought the team. Immediately, Rick Dudley came in as a general manager, so Jacques was out, both as GM and head coach. So in the space of really less than a year and a half, you had three different general managers. We were, we were clearly an organization that was in turmoil. It was a revolving door. Through the turbulence, Dudley managed to lay the foundation for calmer waters. The most important transaction that Rick did was really to land Nikolai Habibulin that built a foundation under the team and it gave the team the confidence to believe that it could win every single night. Dudley also signed a Calgary cast off who seemed to have the skill, if not the size, to succeed. When I came here, obviously, uh, it was a new beginning for me. Hopefully I was gonna get uh, more playing time and uh, a bigger role. My first game of the year, I played a minute 51. I was like, wow. At first it was tough. Uh, I wasn't playing much. I was scratch a few times. And uh, it took me about a month, a month and a half, uh, 20, 25 games into the season, and I started playing more. 
then that's when the torch uh, took over. When John Tortorella first took over the Lightning, I think he made it his first priority to get the team on the same page. By the end of the season, you could see some progress, but you could also see that uh, they had a long way to go. The transformation of the Lightning was underway. What they needed now was a veteran voice in the dressing room. After my year in Buffalo, I ended up, uh, you know, deciding whether I was going to continue to keep playing or not. Uh, that was the, the question, whether I was going to retire. While I was up north, uh, my wife got the call from Rick Dudley. Dud's had a relationship with Andy and, and was able to convince him that this was the place to be and come in here and be a veteran leader. To have David come in here and provide some of the intangibles as far as leadership's concerned is the most important thing that's happened here. You cannot get anything accomplished on the ice until that locker room is straightened out as far as how to be a professional, how to compete, how to prepare. You need someone to stand up and say, this is how we're going to do it. That's what David brings to us here. I believed in John's system. I believed in what he was doing. And I think my presence in the room and uh, me uh, pushing the system, I think that helped uh, the guys follow. Under John Tortorella's direction, the Lightning began to shake their label as perennial underachievers. However, a rift developed between the head coach and star forward Vincent LeCavalier, creating a volatile situation. I think coaches get put into a little bit of a box when, uh, when they start coaching players, they're only allowed to coach uh, and tell them good things. Uh, I think if you're, you're being a proper coach, uh, and going about the right way, uh, there's going to be some correcting. It's not criticizing, it's correcting. And uh, uh, I think sometimes the ego doesn't like the criticizing or the, or the correcting, however you want to put it. Um, and uh, you're not always going to agree on it. When I was named general manager, my very first meeting was with Vincent LeCavier. I brought him into my office here and I said, you know, whatever my legacy is going to be, and I don't know what it'll be, and I don't know how much time I'm going to have here in Tampa as the GM, but whatever my legacy is, my legacy won't be that I'm going to be known forever as the GM who traded Vince LeCavier. And I told him, I said, Vinny, I don't know where the, the ship known as the SS Tampa Bay Lightning is headed. It may be a luxury liner, and we're going on a wonderful cruise together. It may be the Titanic, and we're going to end up at the bottom of the ocean. But wherever we're going, the three of us, John, Vinny, and Jay are all going to be on that ship together. I think it's one of the greatest dynamics in sports is uh, a coach and a player uh, trying to find the right road. That is our job as a coach is to try to direct them down the right road. Obviously, everybody will look at the Vinny LeCavalier situation because that's the one that's brought to the forefront so often. But he's done it to Marty St. Louis. He's done it to Brad Richards. He's done it to Tim Taylor. He does it to everybody, and I think that's what has helped the team buy into his concept is that they see it and they understand it and they realize what he's doing is not an individual thing he's doing it for the team and the team has grown from that with jay feaster at the helm tampa would chart a new course he immediately set to work creating an atmosphere where the lightning could mature on and off the ice I think the big key in, in Jay running this team has been uh, the concept of stability. Prior to when Jay took over as the general manager, there were a lot of changes personnel-wise. There were a lot of you know, quality players here, but guys were shuffled in and out. They never really had a chance to grow together as a team. And the fact that he's resisted moving a lot of players who have become key components have been very important, as well as the controversial deal a couple of years ago at the draft where he traded the fourth overall pick in a three-way deal with the Flyers of Dallas and brings in Ruslan Fedotenko and Brad Lukowicz. In terms of trying to move the pick, the, the problem is that everybody wants to give you a player that's 30 years old and he's going to be unrestricted in a year or two. Whereas, again, if we can do this deal that we've been talking about, I think we can get a guy that can score 20 for us. We play on our top two lines. Good guy defensively, fit very well within the system. The reality of it is that the asset that we can get at four overall, we wouldn't we wouldn't be talking about it unless we were in a situation where, and we do, we, we need to win now. I thought we had to get stronger, we had to be physically tougher. So we went out and brought in uh, Ruslan Fedotenko. We trade the fourth pick overall, we bring in Feds. Uh, we picked up, in addition to Fedotenko, 
two second round picks. And we used one of those second round picks to get Brad Lukowicz. And what it did, it brought in two NHL players. It changed our depth entirely. With that change came results. In the 2002-2003 season, the Lightning emerged as a force in the league for the first time, registering 93 points and their first Southeast Division title. Making the playoffs for only the second time, they rallied from an 0-2 hole against the Washington Capitals. That was an important step in the growth of this franchise, was the fact that they were able to rally together with a late goal by Marty St. Louis, and then the triple overtime game in game six. And we're underway, next goal wins. Having gone through the emotional ringer to win four straight, something very, very few teams have done in Stanley Cup history when they've lost the first two games at home and then jump right into the next series, taking on a veteran team like the Devils, I think was a lesson that uh, they weren't prepared uh, to succeed with. To be honest with you, I think as a team, I thought we played hard against Jersey the second round, but not nearly the level you need to play at in the second round of playoffs. I don't think we answered against Jersey, uh, the checking that they had, and. We didn't understand how hard you had to fight through that. That was the best experience in my life to play in the playoff last year. It was the first time. To have success, to win, you have to experience uh, losses, defeat. And uh, I think we matured as a team for what we went through. I was disappointed when we lost, not only for the loss, but knowing that we would have to play another 82 game to get to this level. started out red hot. I mean, they, they look like a team with a chip on their shoulder. They, they want to prove people wrong when they say they can't do something. And the hot start certainly validated the way they ended last year and proved they were for real, I think. In early December, the Lightning experienced some injuries. At the same time, the offense went dry. And it got to a point where they were scoring so frequently and so easily, it seemed, early in the season. Now the goals weren't coming, the power play wasn't clicking, uh, guys were squeezing the sticks a little bit. They had gone from a healthy lead in first place in the Southeast to eight or ten points out of the lead and in tenth place in the Eastern Conference. Now all of a sudden you're like, wow, they've got to rally to make the playoffs here. I met with the whole team and uh, more or less laid it on the line with our top players. The coaching staff was tired of hearing about that we're getting our chances, we're okay. Uh, we were losing, we're not okay. The onus does go on your top players as you're trying to get through a little bit of a jam during the season, and uh, some of the players didn't like it. I know Marty was sat down the game before that, or two games before that, and lost some of his ice time. Sometimes you feel you're close of coming out of a slump, or you feel your game is, is getting better, it's coming. You know, we're athletes, and the game is not going to always be up top. He wanted to be the guy to lead us out, and he told me that, but he felt he needed more ice time. So he more or less uh, put it in my court. I said, okay, you're going to get your chance. That day, he learned that he was going to start for the Eastern Conference All-Stars, which was a major accomplishment, obviously, with him 
and also the franchise. And for him to celebrate with four points in a 4-1 win in his hometown, it was a very special night. The greatest thing about this game is when you're in an eight-month type situation, there are always going to be some ups and downs. It's, it's how you respond in each way. And, uh, uh, we found our way through that and then started playing very well as a hockey club and, and turned things around. The turnaround continued. Tampa won 10 of their last 12 in January. Even better, they finally acquired the veteran defenseman the team had needed. Bringing in Sid, a guy who won. He was a Stanley Cup champion. He'd been to the finals three times. But he was also yet another veteran voice in that locker room. And so I really do, I, I think that Sid was the final piece of that puzzle. Following Sidor's arrival, the Lightning were nearly unbeatable, winning the Southeast Division for a second straight year. As the season ended, they sat atop the Eastern Conference with 106 points. Playing hard in the playoffs, that's an easy thing to do. To me, that's almost a lazy thing to do. You have to play at a whole different level. Uh, if you want to be talked about with the Detroits and the Colorados and in the jerseys, uh, uh, you have to continue going about your business to get better. The Tampa Bay Lightning have fallen up an inspirational Stanley Cup performance last spring with a record-setting season. They come into the 2004 postseason ready to take a real shot at the Stanley Cup. Now they're the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, number two overall. Let's see if they're legit. The Lightning and the Islanders are anxious for this best of seven series to begin. The Islanders had had regular season success against the Lightning and felt they matched up well for a number one versus number eight meeting. As the series began, New York tried to continue that trend, storming Nikolai Habibulin. There is while the Bulin wall held firm, the Islanders would not. Despite capturing the opener, the Lightning were clearly not at the top of their game. The 3-0 win is great, but it masks a situation that has kind of prevailed in this regular season series. The Islanders have been a very sticky team for the Lightning to deal with. And New York's 3-0 win in Game 2 was further proof that Tampa had their hands full. We had split 1-1 uh, in Tampa, and we felt that we should have been down 2-0. We really didn't deserve to game, game, win game one. Game two, they pretty much dominated us. Uh, we had to get back to the basics and, and play a really hard nose style game and, and uh, simplify things. I got up to New York and in preparation for game three and I had a team meeting and Daryl Sador spoke to the team about understanding what they're in. I just had a feeling that we were in the playoffs just to be in the playoffs. And you look across and you see Dave Anderchuk. And I, I saw a situation where he was batting like crazy. And he was fighting for one thing, and that's the Stanley Cup. I don't think we had that yet in the first two games. I remember said, uh, really being emotional about it, you know, like, obviously he's been through it a few times, and I think he knew, uh, realized that uh, we didn't uh, battle or leave it out there like we should be at this time of year. And, uh, I mean, we just took off after that. Armed with new perspective, the Lightning dominated the next two games as San Luis stepped to the forefront. He four checks, he steals the puck, he scores a big goal, you know, at New York. That, that series is basically over. You know, everyone was talking, we don't want to go back to Long Island, and it's like he, he sensed that, he just he wants to, to move on. He's just checking things off his list. San Luis had one more chapter to write in overtime of Game 5. <laughs> Thank you.
Marty St. Louis is, I think, mean, in so many ways, the heart and soul of this hockey club. He is a guy who just won't quit. Wow. Series victory, Tampa Bay, and thank you, Marty St. Louis. Up next, the seventh seeded Montreal Canadiens and a chance for two other Lightning players with French Canadian roots to take center stage. I think the feeling going into the Montreal series was with Le Cavalier and Brad Richards having played junior hockey there, this would give these guys extra spark. That was unbelievable, that series. I mean, it was uh, such a good time. Trying to clear the zone, couldn't tell it single lead. Oh! You know, it seems that everything was going right from the first series where I couldn't score a goal. You know, second series, it seemed like, you know, every shot I took, it went in. playing in front of family and friends, playing a team uh, that when I grew up was watching, winning Stanley Cups, and now I was there playing against them and trying to eliminate them. It's like a kid growing up, I guess, in New York, wanting to play for or beat the Yankees. Uh, for Vinny and uh, Brad Richards, playing against Montreal was, was something they dreamed about their whole life, and being on that stage in that city, you could tell it was very special to them. And down 3-2 late in game three, the pair did not disappoint. The shot between his legs deflection was one of the most amazing shots any of us have ever seen. Probably never to be duplicated. If he was able to, to sit and think that shot out and know what he was going to do, he, he was on a, on a different plane at that moment, but he did it, and he got him over time, and Brad wins it. That was uh, pretty special. Obviously, uh, overtime goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs are are always going to be remembered that uh, put us up 3 nothing instead of 2-1. It was just unbelievable. And all that remained was a curtain call in game four. Certainly they'll be talking about it with their friends when they go back home and uh, they'll have some fond memories of that, I'm sure. The Bolts had disposed of their first two opponents with relative ease. However, waiting for them in the conference finals, a more formidable foe. Obviously they, they played very well down the stretch. Uh, they, uh, they were solid in, in the first rounds. They got such good offense. Um, they're skating, and um, you know they're a tough team to play against. I was very confident going to the Philadelphia series. Uh, they had some big names and guys that have been around for a while, and I know they're a good team. But I really felt that uh, we could pull it, pull it off. And in Game One, the Lightning took a step in the right direction. <laughs> In game two, Tampa encountered something they've yet to see thus far in the playoffs. An off night for Javi Bullen. Suddenly, question marks where there had been none. When we got beat pretty bad in uh, game two, I think, you know, we went right back to Philadelphia. And uh, I think a lot of people were probably thinking that uh, 
you know, it's going to be tough to uh, tough to win the games in uh, Philadelphia, especially after the loss that we had. And considering the Flyers had yet to lose at home this postseason, Tampa needed to make a statement in Game Three. John Turnbull, the coach of Tampa Bay, talked about him today. He said, "Our best players have to play their best." A pair of early goals stake Tampa to a two-nothing lead. But when Keith Primo closed the gap early in the third, one of Tampa's big guns stepped up. And any doubts about Hobby Bullen were erased this night. Later in the third, some icing on the cake. All questions had been answered. Any doubt about this gentleman's ability to rebound? Nikolai Hobby Bullen was awesome this entire game. That game three, we uh, came out there and uh, I think we kind of probably shocked them. In games four and five, the two teams traded wins. Heading into game six, the Lightning were on the brink of entering uncharted territory. From the beginning, game six was a microcosm of this series. Back and forth. His team trailing three to two, Benetenko nearly delivered the Lightning into the finals single-handedly. With a period to go and the finals within reach, Tampa surprisingly seemed off their game. I found that against Philadelphia, even though sometimes we had to lead. Um, you know, we, we would get a little nervous. The Lightning in Game 5 hung on by their fingernails to escape with a win. And I think that somehow they felt they could get away with it again in Game 6. You could just feel it on the bench. We were almost done. We were almost going to the finals. was once so close, seemed far, far away. You know, it's back and forth in all game, and we uh, just collapsed there late in the third and in overtime, and uh, we got to regroup real quick. There's no time for... Uh, to look back and there's no time to be uh, afraid of games up because uh, it's upon us and uh, we had to look the, the devil in the eye and go right out. In theory, yes, but not everyone was positive that this young group would respond. I'll be honest with you, I was petrified of how our team was going to bounce back because that was a tough one to eat and uh, I wasn't sure how they were going to react. It's happened to me quite a few times where I haven't been able, my teams have not been able to rebound. Uh, uh, I've been able to run on the other side uh, a lot. We immediately talked about it after the game. We said it happens for a reason. It's a test. I, I think all things you go through is always a test of what you're made of. And uh, we had an opportunity to play a game seven. We immediately looked as an opportunity. You go back to uh, 82 games, regular season, to fight for that old mice by game seven. And we got it at home. And uh, that's big. With their faithful urging them on, the Lightning knew this game would be a battle. And an early power play was just the thing to settle them down. Shot 
Freddie Modine gave Tampa a 2-0 cushion. But when the Flyers pulled to within a goal, the Lightning were faced with a moment of truth. I think the thinking was going into Game 7, look, lesson learned. And we tried to stay back and, and just sit on a lead. That's not our style. We can't play that way and succeed. We're not going to do it again. And when the Flyers did have chances, the defense stifled them at every turn. celebration was on in the dressing room and the effect of overcoming the flyers was evident it's such an emotional ride uh, at this point in time you know you win a game you lose a game and uh, i felt tonight that we played really well uh, even if we scored that goal we kept coming and uh we learned from our mistake in game six for the first time in franchise history the lightning would play for the stanley cup something their captain and 22-year veteran Dave Andrichuk could only dream of till now. As a kid, you grew up outside of Toronto. Do you go to the Hall of Fame and look at it? What was the dream like as a young kid looking at it? Uh, you know, I went, my dad took me. You know, we went inside. So, uh, you know, as every kid's dream playing in, playing in Canada that, uh, you know, you want to be uh, holding it up someday. And then I guess as you get into your career and you still see it, you, you still have those same kind of dreams as when you were a young kid. No man has played more games without winning a Stanley Cup than this man ever in the history of the NHL. He's hoping it's going to be this year. The alliance is timing. New Jersey wins the Cup. You come for a few years. You leave. They win the Cup. You're in Boston. You get traded with Ray Bork. You leave. Bork wins his Cup. Come on. No, you you no, said there's like, no, wait a minute. It can't be me, can it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, those, those, especially those cups with New Jersey, uh, where we had great teams, uh, awesome teams. I had a, I had an awesome time in, in New Jersey. Obviously, you're winning every night there, but um, that to me, uh, that hurt the most. I was very happy for Ray. Uh, I had a chance to go back to Colorado. Decided to go back to Buffalo. Uh, those were tough to swallow. You know, I guess other when you when you know guys and you've been on that organization that win, uh, you're happy for them. But you know, I mean, you wish you were there. Are you one of those guys who are superstitious? They have the cups in the room. I'm not in that room. Uh, not in the room, but I've never touched it. I've been to the Hall of Fame quite a few times. I've had my picture taken with it, I think. Uh, but I, I've never actually touched it. Leave it over there. Yeah. Okay, let's go back then to that kid and the, the every hockey player's dream. You're the kid now. You put you a C in your jersey. And in that dream, Gary Bettman's going to call the captain's name. You're the captain right now. What would that be like? Oh, yeah, I sh uh, I, obviously, you, you don't know how you're going to react to it, but um, uh, oh, I, I just think that it would be, you know, obviously it's the ultimate goal for me. Uh, there's no other goals that I can that I can get besides that. I've done everything else in my career that I've wanted to do, but that's why I'm playing. I'm playing to, you know, to ultimately to win, and um, that would put the uh, cherry on top of the, the ice cream, that's for sure. Though he had waited a lifetime for this opportunity, Andrew Chuck and his teammates stayed loose the day before game one. That's as best as it gets on a rebound shot. We end the drill, like you know, you just go for it. Have we got a shot on that yet? We got a shot. And then Benny's goal. And then your goal. Good job, good shot. Right. I want Conroy. Right. That's what I want you to be. He's right handed. He 
sister takes party time in Tampa Bay, you better believe it. This fuck town is now a bull town. I really think that uh, the three series that they played leading up to the finals, it was will versus skill. And you look at the teams that they beat, and look at the talent, and on paper, and uh, Vancouver, even without Bertuzzi, much better team. Detroit, much better team. San Jose, much better team. And yet, will versus skill, Calgary had the will to win. To talk about Calgary lacking skill, would be overlooking the fact that Jerome McGinla has either led the league in goal scoring outright or tied to the goal scoring league twice in the last three years. How much more skill do you need? You look at the uh, the Lightning team, 106 points, skill, but do they have the will? They haven't played a team like the Calgary Flames. Regeer, Commodore, Monador, Rhett Warner, they hit and they take the body all the time and it'll be interesting to see how Tampa reacts. They were going along the same lines as we were. Although we were a number one seed, no one expected us to be there at that point in time. No one expected Calgary to beat three division winners to get to the finals. I thought both teams that were there in the finals deserved to be there, so why not be worried? They're the best out of the West, we're the best out of the East. It's time to get on. <laughs> You could see in the first period of game one that a Gigla was going to be Calgary's best player. I mean, he was hacking guys, he was taking hits, he was giving it right back. You could see right away that he was going to set the tone. And it's up against Conroy, one back by Conroy. Ferrin skates right along the blue line, long cut to quick to quick it, and may run into Dan. It's not get onto the right path, Nikolai Hobby Mullen. To a man, most of them felt that they were coming off such an emotional game in a game seven in their own building against Philly and won that series and they have to come back two days later a little preparation to get ready for that they felt it was difficult to get their emotion level back up to where it needed to be Seven's back off the stick of and caught up by Gidla lost control Chris he got on the breakaway to the net he should save Avi Mullen the rebound Gidla puts it in a short-handed goal for Jerome Gidla and it's two helping Calgary their ability to win on the road is unbelievable. They say in hockey the ultimate compliment to a player is to be able to play well on the road. And Jerome McGinley led the league in road goals this year. And the Calgary Flames are by far the best road team in the playoffs. Across the line to Simon. Passing to Freakin' High Slot to Freakin' to Simon. And from Backhander, scores! Chris Simon and the Flames stretch their lead to 4-1. The underdog has come in, and they have won game one on the road. You know, it's so many ups and downs. It's an emotional rollercoaster. It seems like uh, you're on top of the world, and we just beat Philly a couple days, and we lose to Calgary in the first game, and everybody thinks uh, the world's coming to an end. Just went over to that, uh, the trainer's room just to, to you know, to, to get the usual ice, and it was just the worst news. I had to chuck uh, from me to fall uh, to the coach's room. Not knowing why, he told me my house had burned down, and uh, actually my house is on fire. That's why he put my house is on fire, which was uh, which is tough news for anybody. I mean, I'm 27 years old, and I don't know one person but who's whose house is, is burnt down or, or been caught on fire. It's going to be a long process this summer to get things back together, but uh, right now hockey is definitely helping out. The fact that we're in the finals is actually, believe it or not, making things a lot easier so I can keep my mind off of uh, <laughs> all the stuff I'm going to need to go through uh, in, in the offseason. We'll win it in seven. We're going to get one on the road. We're going to get it tonight. We'll win it in seven. If the Lightning were to make that prediction a reality, then the place for a stand was here. The time now. Look at this strong effort by Vincent LeCavalier. And LeCavalier wasn't finished on that ship. He took out Andrew Ferris. When LeCavalier comes with that kind of physical effort, you know he's ready to play. You know, unfortunately, we lost game one at home, but uh, we answered game two. <laughs> And it's 
kind of give us a little bit more confidence, a little bit more jump, and I think, uh, you know, from there it was uh, taken off. strong game but just for me personally after having a pretty tough loss in your personal life uh, I just want to make sure to rebound and, and uh, have a strong game something I can remember and that's uh, you know a good memory I'm gonna have of, of me just kind of battling back and, and uh, you know fighting uh, fighting back from a tough situation being sent in the third period, uh, a couple of fights and of course at the end of uh, gloves and dunk. The emotions get going when you look up at the score clock and you're losing to the NECA finals and, and that's what happens. Next game is a new game and, and we realize that uh, we got to be a lot stronger, we got to be a lot more intense and uh, we will be. Well, I mean, it's playing up hockey, you know, here's a team we don't see too often and I thought in game one we played that game like, uh, you know, we'd... We didn't really hate that team, you know? And yeah, I but, thought tonight you know, we hated that team a little more, and I'm sure but, uh, uh, they feel the same way. The series shifted to Calgary for Game 3, where the Lightning would face a team battling for themselves, their city, even their country. With Calgary's emotions running hot, Vincent LeCavalier fought fire with fire. Midway through a tense, scoreless contest came the deciding moment of Game 3. The break. Leap the reacher. He the shoot. Oh, the really good save. I really thought I saw that it, and uh, I couldn't believe it. Moments later, Calgary would capitalize. Sitting on the bench 30 seconds later, watching them score, they love one That's tough to handle. And the Lightning would never recover. As game four got underway, Richards would not have to wait long for a chance at redemption. Moves back to Richards. Ricardo Yeti. Not a lot of movement here. Back to him. Richards. A shot. It's Tampa Bay gets that final fast goal on a power play. 
Game four was Nikolai Habibulin's turn to shine. But a seemingly innocent play nearly ruined his night. I was just trying to stop it because the puck was just barely, barely coming to me. And uh, and all of a sudden, I think he hit a bump or something. And just right before uh, uh, my stick, it just uh, changed the direction. And uh, thanks God it wasn't, uh, wasn't going fast because, you know, I'd probably be in trouble. Playoffs are so evenly matched. Uh, you get momentum like that in a game, score a goal. Uh, it's a lot easier to play with the lead than it is uh, trying to fight back. Uh, you know, that's just uh, how big it is and how tight it is in the playoffs. Right now, it's going to come down to the battle of wills. Is Tampa's system going to be able to come on strong enough in the final two or three games to impose their will on Calgary, or is Calgary's will going to be strong enough to impose their style on Tampa? And I think whoever doesn't get caught up in the other's game is going to have the better chance to, to win two of the final three. This series tied at 2-2, and scoring first has been essential, not only in this series, but throughout this playoff year. I think your players start thinking that if we win this game, we almost have a stranglehold to win the Stanley Cup. And when you start thinking, you start watching. And we watched Calgary play against us game five, and it showed. Delamore cleared it around over to get him on the door. Left at the air side, shot the fuck this With a renewed sense of fight, the Lightning went on the offensive. They were rewarded with a scoring opportunity in the final seconds of the first period. Seabach looking, trying to get him on the backhand. Can't. Beautiful tie-up by Rip Lord. Warner was in. Nielsen. The two teams would trade goals again as a Ginless tally in the second was immediately answered by Freddie Modine at the start of the third. The 2-2 tie would hold up and the teams headed into the first overtime session of the series. We're in overtime. The score will be 3-2 in this game. It's just a question of who gets the three. down to a bounce here or there. Uh, you know, it's two good teams, and we're going to have to go in their building and uh, stay focused on what we got to do. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, this team has, has a lot of character in this room, and we're going to bounce back. Oh, I dream come true. I mean, to be able to have a chance to do something special and uh, to do it at home would be even more special. I mean, we'll give ourselves an opportunity to only have one one more win, and it's, uh, you know, it's a Stanley Cup. we got to get a beer now. Leaving Tampa, the Flames were confident they had scored the series' knockout blow. Back in Calgary, the team and the city looked to celebrate its first Stanley Cup championship in 15 years. All of Canada, I mean, I talked about all of 
Okay, I'm just waiting for them to win it. That's a tremendous amount of pressure. We were supposed to lose now. We weren't supposed to win this. And again, it's just about finding your way in a seven-game series. That's what's so great about it. It's a seven-game series, not a five-game series. So you have those seven games to try to get it done. Tampa also had unexpected help as one lightning forward got a special message from an old teammate. gave us hope that, uh, you know, this can be done. Can you imagine the excitement that Calgary Flame players are trying to control and just play this like a game instead of a game that it is? Going to the Calgary, knowing that we have to win to give ourselves a chance, I felt that we're going to do it. And yeah, the truck came up, took it away, but it's on the side, it kept us off. Although the game was scoreless after one, there was a sense it wouldn't stay that way for long. The crowd is nervous too. You know that story about the first goal. That's a cover. Now we have a power play. That's been a pretty strong weapon for Tampa. The Flames responded by turning up the heat and chipping away at the ruin wall. Yell gets there, chips it to the demon and turns, and turns, and turns, Instead of taking control of the game, Calgary took another penalty. You know, here we go again. You know, I'm going to be close. I'm going to, uh, you know, it's going to be an overtime goal for them. It's, uh, it's going to knock me out. Andrew Chuck would have to endure a full overtime session, wondering if his worst fears would be realized. In the second OT, it took exactly 33 seconds to find out they would not. Same we couldn't get it. Cole Moore steps up. Can he hold it in? Yes, Tim Taylor. Look, what's up with me, Sam? Most important goal I've ever scored, probably maybe the most important goal I've ever scored. We give ourselves a chance now in game seven, and we go back to the home ice. First six games were forgotten. It was about one game, 
Um, it was a pretty special one. Game seven in the finals, I mean, it doesn't get any better, I guess. I mean, I don't know how many guys can say that they played in that game seven. For a young group, second year in the playoffs, to have an opportunity to play another game seven within the same playoff year, semifinal game seven, then the finals game seven, it was supposed to happen. And that's what we're talking about through the last two series. This is all supposed to happen this way. I was a rack all day. Just tried to calm myself down. Eight o'clock games seemed like forever to, to get there. Uh, you wish it was a, a one o'clock or a three o'clock game. But... It was really kind of for myself, nerve wracking right before the game. You know, it was really, it seemed like too much time. Before you started playing that game, everybody was thinking about, you know, this is something you dreamed about, uh, game seven. And we had to stay focused on what we had to do. We had to play a strong game if we were going to win the cup. Two teams riding on every shift. Neither offense found room to move. Then late in the first period, an opportunity for Tampa Bay. If the Lightning were to seize the moment, it would not be the size of their playbook, nor the strength of their game plan that would win the day. Remember what you were when you were on the ponds and you I remember skating with a puck, and you'd be the, the commentator as you're going down the ice, and you're going to score that big goal in Game 7. Think that way, and, and almost will yourself to this year. Dropping it off from Houdini, back to the point right side. There's a shot on the team, Gifford's under the gun. He scores! Rousseau, Bobby Pedro, Gifford, 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 Gifford. Well, he got the first goal there, and the, and the rebound, and the spiral play. And it was one of those things, it was, I guess, right time, right place. That was huge, uh, that goal. You know, it was the first period, the fans were into it then. Obviously, led to the second goal, we started pressing a little bit. Lecalier stops, and Lecalier spinning off circle. Lecalier in traffic, squeezes free of his left, and it's echo shot! from final victory, the Lightning tried to tighten the noose at the start of period three. Alert, Alert, you can just feel the tension mounting here for Calgary as they hustle it up and down the ice trying to find a way to get through. Nearly halfway through the third, it seemed that Tampa might finally have extinguished the flame's fire. Then one shot changed everything. Comes to the line, kept it by Conroy, skates left, winds, fires, he scores! Craig Conroy with a long shot beats Nikolai Habibulin. The Flames are on the board. It's a one-goal game. It's 2-1. to one. Suddenly, Tepa came perilously close to losing its grip on Lord Stanley's Cup. At that moment, uh... I think they threw everything at us that they had. Well, 10 minutes seemed like 20 minutes. Uh, believe me, it was, uh, it was long. Near side, side, show on the back, got blocked. Modine. Yeah, I was on there for a few of those uh, mad scrambles. I wasn't thinking much except for uh, trying to get the puck out or uh, whatever we could. You know, we're just running around and just trying to block shots and, and tip it out of the zone. And, um, and once again, I mean, it's 2 1. You never know what can happen. With the Flames putting everything into a final surge, it would be up to Javi Bullen to answer one final call. I remember that, that save he made. I think it was four or five minutes left. And uh, I thought the guy would have scored for sure. to control the rebound but it went right to uh, the defenseman that was screaming on the other side and, and uh, I 
was just hoping, please hate me. <laughs> I mean, your goaltender does win championships for you, and he did. Calgary had its opportunity for a final miracle. And as time ticked away, <laughs> Tampa would never give them another. So I, I thought, you know what, we can, we can do it. And uh, we did. Five seconds left. Buck goes to the far corner. Leopold leaves it in front. It's not just about me, uh, me winning my Stanley Cup. It was about these guys coming from nowhere and, uh, you know, accomplishing a lot in, in two or three years together as a unit. And I, it, was, it, was, it was awesome. enjoyable things was to stand back and and see some of the players do the things that they do uh, when they're excited and uh, uh, I just at that point in time want to thank them for allowing us to be with them uh, through the couple past months uh, just let them know how much we appreciate them respect them and uh, we're fortunate enough to be with them we couldn't have been more proud of before this game started as far as what you guys have done and for me, I've never done it. I've never gone through it, and a lot of you guys haven't gone. I never realized how hard it was. And for athletes especially, it's not the coaches. It has nothing to do with anybody except you guys. What you did these two months, I'll never forget. Craig Rams, you'll never forget. The coaches, I'll never forget. So I just want to thank you for letting us be part of it. And whatever that happens here, you're just... I mean, there are times when Torts and I looked at each other afterward, much after the celebration. We were down in, in the Carter by his office in, in the room. And, you know, we looked at each other and said, who are we kidding? You know, look, look at this. And at one point during the conversation, he stopped me and he said, listen to us. Listen, listen to what we're talking about. And, and it is. I mean, it, it is still hard to believe that that's where we are because it's happened so incredibly quickly. You know, it was the late Freddie Shiro and told his Flyers teams before their first cup that you know we win today and we walk together forever and 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 I believe that. You know, I, I believe that it's true. We will be together forever.
welcome to the Stanley Cup celebration for your 2004 Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay, how great is this? Yeah! I can't spend too much time up here because I know what these guys have been doing the past couple of nights and they're just not going to allow me to. I think they're ready to drop right now. I didn't think there was going to be 15,000 people here today, but uh, you know what? You guys are unbelievable. It's taken me 22 years to get here. What a day. What a day. Thank you. You can strike the records now. 1,790-some thousand games that I've played. I finally got a Stanley Cup. We are champions.